I'm Tom Malagany for Inside EVs. I'm standing here in front of a beautiful blue metallic Porsche Taycan Turbo Cross Turismo. I'm about to do the 70 mile an hour highway range test. Now, we're not strangers to Taycans here at Inside EVs. As a matter of fact, I did a 70 mile an hour highway range test for a Taycan 4S in the dead of winter it was a cold weather range test it was 14 degrees out i cold soaked the whole car outside overnight was still able to drive 213 miles that was a 4s with the performance plus battery pack which is 93.4 kilowatt hours which is the same battery pack that comes standard in all cross turismos the cross turismos are not available in the smaller with the smaller battery pack the 79 kilowatt hour battery pack that porsche offers as an option on some of the tycon versions uh, so this has the larger performance plus battery pack now kyle connor did the 70 mile an hour range test with the base tycon rear wheel drive and did 293 miles now that car was only epa range rated at 225 miles so we know the Taycans always way outperform their, their combined EPA range rating, their highway EPA range, range rating, even their city EPA range rating, they outperform when we do these 70 mile an hour highway range tests. The Taycan is known for always exceeding the range rating. And uh, Porsche does this with a lot of the metrics of their vehicles, even their acceleration numbers that they publish. Uh, regular owners can get in the car and beat those accelerate acceleration numbers you know Porsche is, is known for uh, under promising and over delivering but we really don't know how far this guy is gonna go today uh, because we've never range test across Turismo it shouldn't go as far as the regular Taycans do um, and especially today we don't have the optimal uh, tires on the vehicle these are the 21 inch five spoke blade wheels which aren't the worst for range they're not the worst but they're not the best for range uh, and also this cross turismo while it isn't epa range rated yet so we don't have those figures on what we should be measuring it up against uh it shouldn't go as far as the base tycon will so um you know personally i'm going to be happy if i just exceed the um epa range rating on the tycon turbo uh, not the Cross Turismo, uh, which is, uh, I believe it's 213, 212 or 213 miles per charge. So if we get up over there, uh, somewhere around 220 miles, I think it's a great win for this vehicle. Um, but we'll see. We, we might outperform it. They always totally surprise us. It's a great day for range. It's 80 degrees out now. Uh, it's going to get up to about 86 so i am going to have to have the air conditioning on the vehicle uh, whenever i do these range tests i set it at 86 uh 86 68 degrees when i need the air conditioning on and i try to keep the fan setting at like two or three depending on what's needed to keep me cool enough inside the vehicle while i'm driving we're going to head out on the new jersey turnpike now after i top off at 100 percent i'm here at an electrify america charging station topping it back off to 100 percent so i can hop right out onto the highway and start driving in loops up and down the turnpike as we do with all of these vehicles on our range tests i'm going to check back in when we're about 25 percent of the way to give an update but first please don't forget click that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming content here on the Inside EVs YouTube channel. All right, so we have gone 25% of the range test. We're at 75% state of charge, and we've gone 69 miles. That is crazy. If that holds for the rest of the trip, that'll take us to around 276 miles. That'll shock me if the Cross Turismo does that well. Um, but there's a couple things that we need to talk about. The first is probably the biggest um, impact is there is a seven mile an hour wind today and it's coming right from the north. And right now I'm traveling uh, on the southbound on the New Jersey Turnpike. So I'm getting a tailwind now. Once I turn around and start heading north, it's gonna be a headwind. So I'm expecting the consumption to go up a little bit uh, in the next leg of this trip. So that's something to keep an eye on. Um, also, we're averaging uh, 33, I think 0.2 uh, kilowatt hour per 100 miles driven. 
and the Taycan has a 93.4 kilowatt hour battery, but of that, only 83.7 kilowatt hours is usable. So if you do the math with that, um, it comes out to about 200 and I think 250 miles, 259. So that's even short of the 276 that it would we're estimating if we maintain the same amount of miles driven for each leg of this trip. So that's something to keep an eye on. I don't expect to get up to 270 miles, 276 miles like you would think you'd be able to after driving 25% of the way and driving 69 miles. Um, but these things change on all the road trips, all the uh, road tests and the um, 70 mile an hour highway range tests that we do. You, typically each leg ha has a different um, consumption rating because we're driving in loops and we get different um, uh, d different elevations, different uh, uh, wind, and so that changes from time to time. Uh, another thing I wanna mention is uh, I do have the air conditioning on. Uh, as I said earlier, it's 68 degrees it's set at and it's on fan setting number three. I need that to maintain uh, a cool enough temperature in here. I'm kinda on the edge of being comfortable and not comfortable, um, and that's what I usually like to, to sit it on. I have the car in range mode, and in range mode, uh, it um, bounces between front driving, uh, having the front motor drive the vehicle and the rear motor drive the vehicle. If I'm on flat surface and there's not a lot of power needed, the vehicle is driving with uh, the front motor only. But then I notice as soon as I go up even the slightest incline, uh, the car pushes the power to the rear motor. And then as I'm going down the hill uh, on the other side, the front motor is the motor that's being used. So that's interesting. And Porsche has a really nice meter that you can set on your instrument cluster to show you which of the motors is, is providing uh, the power and how much power because quite often uh, both motors are being used, especially on the hard acceleration. They're both being used to the fullest. Um, the tire pressure, I don't think I mentioned that earlier. Um, as with all of our range tests, we set it to the manufacturer's recommended tire pressure before I start when the vehicle is cold in the morning. On the case of this specific vehicle, it has staggered tires so that um, the tires are a different size and uh, the tire pressure was slightly different for the rears as it was in the, for the front. So we set that correct. I mentioned the wind. We do have a wind today. We have the air conditioning on and I'm driving in range mode. I think that covers um, the basics, what we set the cars up and how we do these range tests. Um, first quarter was very good. We'll check back in when we're 50% state of charge, see how far we've gone. All right, so we are halfway through the range test at 50% state of charge. We didn't do quite as good as we did on the first 25% where we drove 69 miles but we did go 63 miles. So at 50% state of charge, we've driven 132 miles. If that holds up, we're looking at somewhere around 260, 264. That's fantastic if we do that well. But as I mentioned earlier, and you saw it come true, we don't always duplicate the same range on the first half, the second half of the trip as we did on the first half of the trip. Still, uh, this is gonna perform very well, uh, you know, at, at even if we get less in this second half, uh, in my opinion, the Cross Turismo is doing fantastically. Uh, I, I, I expect you know at least 250 miles at this point, uh, enough so that I have to recalculate my whole loops uh, because as you know, the way we do these, I try to finish up driving right when the vehicle hits zero, I should be very close within a couple miles of an Electrify America charging station to charge it back up. But now that it's gonna go so much further than I had thought, uh, I have to replan the route because I'll end up uh, arriving with like 25, 30 miles of range left and that's too much left on the table. If I end with uh, one or 2% state of charge, that's acceptable as far as I'm concerned, but um, not 10% state of charge or 15%, whatever we'd be at. So now I've got to do some calculating. I might have to pull over and plot out exactly what exit I can get off to continue the loop to drive back so I land right at Electrify America when we're as close to zero as possible. We're going to check back when we are at 25% state of charge with an update. We'll see how well we're doing at that point. So we're at the 25% charged mark. We've gone three quarters of the trip and we've covered 191 miles. That means we've 
only did 59 miles in that last 25% section. The first 25% section, we did 69 miles, then 63 miles, now 59 miles. So um, the consumption's going up. We're now averaging uh, 34 kilowatt hours per 100 miles driven. Uh, so that's about 2.94 miles per kilowatt hour. Earlier when we checked in, we were at uh, 33.2 uh, kilowatt hours per 100 miles, which is slightly above three miles per kilowatt hour. So it's pretty consistent, but we have dropped a little bit and uh, it could be because of the wind. It could be because slight elevation changes on the New Jersey Turnpike, but we're in that final leg now. And um, we have 48 miles to go. And the range estimator is saying we have 48 miles worth of battery left. So this is going to be a tight one again. We'll check back in when we arrive at the Electrify America station. Hopefully we'll make it. The only thing I'd like to point out is temperature. So the temperature has continued to rise today. It was about 80 degrees when we started. It's 86 degrees now. I've been able to uh, use the, uh, the, the air conditioning at 68 degrees and swap between fan setting two and fan setting three. I've been kind of going back and forth, uh, which is pretty consistent with, with what I do with all the electric vehicles that I do these range tests on during the summer months. We'll check back in when we're finished. So we made it. And by the skin of our teeth, just as I got off the highway and I had about a mile to go, the estimated remaining range changed from one mile to just four lines, meaning that's it. The state of charge was at 1%. It hit zero before I hit the parking lot here. Perfect timing. We went 246 miles, a great showing for the Taycan Turbo Cross Turismo. Uh, we don't have the EPA range rating yet because that hasn't been established, but I'm sure that when it does get listed, it's going to be much less than 246 miles. And it just continues the fact that the Taycans seem to always outperform their range rating. Great showing, great road car, the Taycan. I'd, I'd be willing to take this anywhere. The only concern is do you find these guys and do they work when you pull up? It's one of the advantages that Tesla still has over everybody else. Their supercharger network is unparalleled and they always work every time you pull up. Uh, so uh, one of the things I wanna note is the consumption rate went up again. And the interesting thing is each 25% leg, we got less miles, the 100% to 75% state of charge, we drove 69 miles. From 75% state of charge to 50% state of charge, we drove 63 miles. From 50% to 25%, we drove 59 miles. And from 25% down to zero, we drove 55 miles. We ended up with a consumption rate of 34.3 kilowatt hours per 100 miles driven. That translates to uh, 2.91 miles per kilowatt hour used. If you multiply that by the Taycan's usable battery pack, which is 83.7 kilowatt hour, I should have only been able to drive 244 miles. So there's nothing left in this puppy. It left nothing on the table. I'm sure I couldn't drive more than another mile or two. So, uh, you know, 246 is a fair rating for this at 70 miles an hour. The conditions were great today. It's about 85 degrees now. I did have to have the air conditioning on, so that probably robbed us of a couple of miles. If it was a little bit cooler, we might've been able to squeeze 250, somewhere around there. Uh, but in any event, fantastic showing. Uh, Taycan, Turbo, Cross Turismo, 246 miles on the inside EV's 70 mile an hour highway range test. Don't forget, click that subscribe button, ring the notification bell, so you don't miss any upcoming content here on the Inside EV's YouTube channel. And thanks for watching.